Hey guys, Jack here and today I've got a treat for you. Pigeons. Pigeons everywhere. You can find them in the streets begging for one of your fries from McDonald's or pooping on your brand new car in the driveway. You can't escape the buggers, there's just too many of them and now they've only gone and got their own game mode in Battlefield 1 believe it or not and it's called War Pigeons. So during the Great War man-made communication systems were still crude and unreliable, they were quite big so dogs and pigeons were used extensively to carry messages. In the War Pigeons game mode in BF1 opposing sides compete to use messenger pigeons to call in artillery barrages on the enemy, you see they are actually quite evil after all. When the game starts a pigeon coop with a messenger pigeon is placed somewhere on the map, a ninja stealth pigeon if you will, and then you've got to locate the pigeon before the enemy and carry it to a safe location out in the open. If you manage to grab the pigeon and get it to one of these safe spaces you'll prepare a message and send it off calling in for artillery support and once the message is successfully sent an artillery barrage will strike the enemy. Pretty new interesting game mode then, kind of sounds like a twist on capture the flag but once you've got a pigeon and got it to a safe zone perhaps there's like a timer where you're writing the message and I'm guessing that the pigeon can be stolen by the enemy team during that process too. Can you shoot it down as it flies away? Are there multiple pigeons? Who knows? All I care about is that this sounds like it could be fun and we're one step closer to making the pigeon you have a reality guys. That's the important thing here. No word on player count though but I imagine this is like a smaller domination game mode with smaller maps and infantry only so perhaps 16 to 24 players at a guess. Moving on we now also know all of the maps that will be available at launch for Battlefield 1 and there are 9 in total, BF3 had 9, BF4 had 9, BF1 also has 9, turn 999 upside down you get 666, 666 is the sign of the devil, dice are the Illuminati, confirmed. Having just updated the website and taken a look through, all of these maps get me pretty excited for the game because there's some real cool looking environments here that just make it look like a lot of fun. Let's take a look at all nine now and see what we make of them. First up, Ballroom Blitz, no not the song, probably the weirdest name for a map set in World War One, but I guess we're just gonna have to go with it. Join the final offensives along the Meuse River in 1918. Here fierce fighting in trench lines is quickly replaced by the untouched beauty beyond hell. A massive French chateau, previously home to officers behind the rear lines, is now the scene for a battle with both tanks and flamethrowers. The chandeliers are shaking from the barrage as the American forces push the final railway hub at the edge of this map. Seems like a big urban map this one and I think we saw part of it in the trailer for a few seconds. I'm guessing that the French Chateau will have heavily destructible elements in it to close quarters style you know with that micro destruction. It's going to be interesting to compare it from the start of the map and then at the end. Next map, Argonne Forest. The shadowy depths of the Argonne Forest is the scene for some of the most brutal close quarter combat in Battlefield 1. The world inside this forest features devious defensive setups combined with a labyrinth of bunkers and machine gun nests. Camouflage field guns firing at point blank range, stormtroopers clearing out bunkers with gas and the best use of sharpened spades will determine who owns the depths of this forest. Heroes are forged, surviving the intense of this infantry focused map. Infantry only then, maybe this one, we've seen it in a couple of screenshots and in the trailers and I wonder if we can blow all the trees up though. But the language used there, a labyrinth of bunkers, potentially lots of trenches and bunker fighting on this map which will be quite different to what we've experienced so far in Scar and on the Sinai Desert. Up next, Foul Fortress. Join one of the earliest amphibious landings of the Great War as the British Empire struggles to secure the oil on the Al for Peninsula. The majestic Ottoman fortress of Fao guards the entrance and is not falling uncontested. Here you'll fight through marshlands and dunes, over bridges and shallow coves. The assault finally enters the ancient fortress itself. The quest for oil begins here. The dreadnought needs to feed. I mean just looking at that fortress in the background there, it makes the little boy in me smile with glee because I used to try and build stuff like that out of Lego as a kid. Uh, this map will also have boat combat as well and those tower walls probably destructible but also a perfect sniping position I reckon. 
Carrying on the next map is Suez, a struggle for the most vital supply line of World War I. Even though it was considered impossible, the Ottomans crossed the desert of Sinai and threatened the canal. Join the fight by the banks of the Grand Canal and make tactical use of the dunes, fight through shallow defences with field guns or mortars, through the outskirts of Kantara and into the deep desert beyond. Sounds interesting and I'm definitely getting Paracel Storm vibes from that screenshot. Another infantry focused map next I reckon called Amiens, a destructive clash in a majestic city, fight on the streets and squares in French city of Amiens during the German Spring Offensive, a struggle in crumbling alleys, a courthouse around bridges and railways where the British and the Germans desperately seek to control the depths of the city. This looks very Sen Crossing-esque to me, I think this map will be very popular amongst the BF community, massive destruction and chaos, I can't wait to play on this map. The next map is called Mont Grappa and I think we've seen this in a lot of the trailers. Take part in one of the final battles amongst the peaks of kings in the Venetian Alps. High up above the clouds in a desperate fight for control of mountain forts are challenging even for the toughest soldiers. Utilise the massive fort cannons to stop the advancing enemies as they scale the mountainside. Up here, in this furious struggle, the Austro-Hungarian Empire holds the upper hand, but the Italian army won't stop until they've taken back what's theirs. Could be a similar kind of layout to Hangar 21 in BF4 with one team at the top of the mountain and the other at the bottom from that description. And the airship is definitely on this level too. Lots of plane combat here for sure. Next is Empire's Edge. Along the Adriatic coast, a fierce struggle for land and life is taking place. A rugged but fortified shore becomes the battlefield for an empire under siege. What was once a beautiful Mediterranean village by the coast is now transformed by mechanised war, where waves and dreadnought battleships pound the remains of Italy's Great War. Land, air and sea in this map most definitely and very picturesque. The final two maps are St Quentin Scar and Sinai Desert. Obviously we've seen plenty of gameplay on those already so we know what to expect there and then of course the first free map comes out in December called Giant Shadow which I've already covered in a previous video. Overall like I said I definitely think there's some really cool locations here, new places which you've probably never really been to in video games and I expect each map to be packed full of detail too. I get the impression that there's lots of variety which is of course what we're after in a Battlefield game to keep things fresh. I wonder which maps will turn Turn out to be fan favourites though. I'm guessing that Amiens, Argon, St Quentin Scar, Ballroom Blitz and Foul Fortress will be at the top of my list. And wrapping things up for today, we got a detailed news post on the melee combat in the game from DICE's Tommy Riddling. A couple of interesting things in here too. During a bayonet charge, you'll benefit from a faster sprint speed, we knew that already, than normal, and a slight damage reduction from incoming gunfire. We did kind of suspect that anyway, but it's good to have it confirmed about the health thing. I personally had no trouble killing players bayonet charging me in the beta, so I reckon it's only a very small change to the damage reduction and nothing to worry about. He goes on and this is the really interesting stuff. Equipping a bayonet to your primary weapon also negatively affects the recoil of your weapon and how quickly you can raise your weapon to a fire ready position after a sprint. Picking a bayonet also means that you'll indirectly forego other add-ons that you could have equipped instead. Plus the bayonet isn't the only upgraded melee option in BF1. Now that's really interesting to me, I didn't actually expect there to be any negative effects of equipping a bayonet, but there you have it from the horse's mouth, an interesting trade off for sure. Do you want that charge option for a quick kill or a one hit kill on the hero characters, or do you want better recoil and being able to fire your gun a little bit faster after a sprint? He also goes into detail about the differences in melee weapons in terms of their stats. So there are three distinct melee weapon classes in BF1, each with their own pros and cons, knives, clubs and bladed slash specials. They primarily differ in three stats, the speed at which you can swing them, the damage they deal with each hit that connects and how easy they are to perform a brutal takedown with. So while a knife for example deals a low amount of damage, it's by far the quickest to perform consecutive swings with and it's got a much bigger takedown zone than the other melee weapon types. This means that if you go for a stealthy kill from behind, a knife is going to give you the biggest possible zone behind an enemy player from where you can do a brutal takedown. Clubs are a jack of all trades and they deal medium damage at medium speed 
speed and have a medium sized takedown zone. And then the bladed slash special melee weapons such as the hatchet, shovel and pickaxe are the heaviest hitters but also the slowest and they've got the smallest takedown zone. You start the game having access to a simple club, shovel and knife but as you progress through the game you'll have the ability to equip more embellished or specialised melee weapons and get this some of them can be used to cut barbed wire, destroy wooden barricades or damage light vehicles. Melee weapons damaging light vehicles? I wonder what that's going to be but at least instead of just being a cosmetic change here your selection of melee weapon in BF1 will actually quite heavily affect your playstyle. I like that a lot and it adds more depth to the melee combat when you're getting those 1v1 we both just run out of ammo situations so your choice will obviously be very important if you want to come out on top and that's all for today folks i hope you enjoyed this one lots of new info and details in there for sure if you liked the video give me a thumbs up if you didn't like the video a thumbs down let me know your thoughts down below not long to wait now until the game is out one month for full release on October 21st but if you get all of the early access stuff you can actually play it on the 13th of October which really isn't that far away at all. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.